Hey friends, this is Dr. Heather coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather. I'm going to help try to help my light here a little bit. We have amazing sunshine here in Overland Park. If you are brand new to Ask Dr. Heather, I want to welcome you here. This is a blog or a Facebook page I started about seven, probably actually nine years ago, I'll correct myself. Um, when people started asking me in my clinic health questions, they would read things online, magazines, and really try to sift and sort out what's happening, what the truth is, what you really should believe. So if you are brand new, just wanted to say welcome. Things are meant to be shared. So this information is for you, your family, your friends, and whoever you want to share that with. I always love knowing where you're coming from. I'm still super surprised that we are reaching people from East Asia, Malaysia, um, all the provinces in Canada and Mexico just warms my heart knowing that there are people around the globe trying to change their health status. So the topic today is generally related to questions that I get from people, but this is actually kind it ties into my own family. If you don't know who I am, I'm the co-owner of Cardin Center for Wellness. We have a very functional style of practice and have been practicing for over 20 years here in Overland Park. Also the mother of four amazing young men. They are 16 to 24 now. We just went on a week-long vacation to an all-inclusive in Mexico and I love this. The boys jump on the scale as they filtered from college and stuff and came home, jumped on the scale. We packed our bags, went to Mexico. We got home, they jumped on the scale. So what do you think happened? Some people lose some weight, some people gain some weight. So this is a question that I get a lot at the clinic also. How is it that I'm eating exactly like I'm supposed to <clears throat> during the day? I'll say like, you're getting ready for a holiday and you're like, I'm eating exactly like I'm supposed to, the macros I'm supposed to, I wanna fit in this New Year's dress, I want a low carb keto diet and the scale did not move. Then you actually do something like one of my sons, you go on vacation, you totally don't count anything, you don't even recognize if you're hungry, the food looks amazing, so you just continue to eat course after course after course, and you know you totally overate, ate where you weren't hungry, and then you get home and the scale drops. Why does that happen? This is a very big clue about what's happening in your life. So if you're scenario one, where you've tried to actually lose weight or lose some fat, you think you've really kept the sugar out, you've been getting better with your sleep, better with your mindfulness, but the scale's not moving, or you go on and or you go on vacation, you totally blow it and the scale moves. What's happening? That's to let us know that your cortisol is really out of balance. What is cortisol? If you haven't heard of it, we're going to go into a deeper dive later in the week here, but cortisol is our stress hormone. What happens is when our cortisol goes up, which actually our cortisol normally rises in the morning, that's why we're supposed to wake up feeling refreshed because it recycles overnight. So as the cortisol rises in the morning between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m., that allows us to wake up. Cortisol is low in the middle of the night. That's why it's really hard to say awake in the middle of the night or try to read or try to drive or things like that, but it also is our stress hormone. So what happens when our cortisol level goes up? So if you're one of the people who know you have a lot of stress in your life, whether it's financial stress, relationship stress, job stress, whatever the stress is, the body says, ding, 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 stress hormone, cortisol, cortisol. What happens with cortisol is when cortisol rises abnormally, then, and it should die down about four to five o'clock, it should be going, going and reducing, so that way our body starts to calm down and we go into the restorative period. But if it doesn't rise or it flip-flops where it's actually low in the morning, high in the afternoon, Increased cortisol increases our mood. It increases our carbohydrate metabolism, also increases insulin release. What happens is when cortisol goes up, insulin goes up, and then once insulin goes up, we eat, it drops, we're hungry again. So it creates this big cycle of increased metabolism, or increased craving of fatty foods, increased craving of sugary foods, also increases moods. Because what happens is once the cortisol goes up, the insulin goes up, we know that the tension in our body starts to build up, and then our body's like, oh, I need the sugar, I need the sugar, I've got to help balance out the insulin and then it drops. That drop in insulin and our blood glucose, our blood sugar is really what makes us start craving that whole sugary thing again. What we know is, what we know now is that the more often that we feed that rise in cortisol, that rise in insulin, and the more often we get the drop in blood sugar, the more likely we are to get that increased hunger of whatever foods, whether it's salty or sugary. So if you're a person who, like one of my sons, went on vacation, just completed finals, which was probably super stressful, and I mean, he ate, like we were just telling my mom, like, can you believe he lost weight after all that he ate three or four main courses. Yes, with steak and shrimp and lamb and veal. Still over eight, even though it was amazing decadent food. Way too many calories, but he dropped weight. That tells us that during his day-to-day -day life, he's probably having too much stress, which could be, again, normal for a college student, but that could be true for you. So if you think you've done all the right macros and things aren't moving, then you start evaluating, is there too much stress? And you can also actually do a cortisol stress. Um, we suggest that you do a saliva and a urine cortisol stress, and we're gonna go more into that cortisol testing later in the week. Today, I just wanted to share that, because oftentimes people are like, 
how come I lost weight? I went off the diet you told me. I didn't do the low carb thing. I didn't do the keto thing. I just ate whatever I wanted, trying to change the life. I ate whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, and I lost weight. But then I always ask them, how did you sleep? Oh, I slept amazing. I got to sleep in. So oftentimes that little extra sleep allows you to reset that cortisol, which means lower cortisol is lower anxiety, is lower balanced out moods, lower blood sugar, better blood sugar balance, lower insulin, better carbohydrate and fat metabolism. Also, it, it decreases thirst. Oftentimes, stress will increase thirst and we'll find ourselves over drinking things like soda or sweet tea or sports drinks because our cortisol level is trying to rebalance out. Increased cortisol can also increase our blood pressure. It can increase our fatigue. It can decrease our immune system. Why do people get sick right after Christmas? They often say, oh, I was exposed to a lot of kiddos. I was exposed to my family members and they had been sick. No, it's because of all the stress around the holidays that actually caused your cortisol to be out of balance because it's our stress hormone and then it disrupted your immune system. So which came first, the immune system be disrupted or the cortisol? Generally, it's the stress that leads to the cortisol. Cortisol leads to the overeating of sugary food foods or increase and in rise of, of insulin and drop in blood sugar after you eat, which leads to a decrease in the immune system because the immune system is so busy trying to figure out how to get the cortisol down, trying to figure out how to calm down the stress receptors that our immune system generally gets overused, so to speak. And so oftentimes it can't be as strong as you want to because of all the stress leading into the holidays. And I'm sharing this today because the holidays are not over. We still have a couple of days left in the new year. I know I have put a little bit of stress on myself where I actually am completing my, <laughs> I have to have 50 CEUs every year in the state of Kansas to renew my license. So I need to get that done before tomorrow. But I know there's people out there saying, you know, there's two days left in the new years. I've got an amazing party I've got to get into. I didn't reach my health goals. I've got, maybe you're a salesperson, you've got some sales goals, or maybe you're a nurse or a retail worker and you've got to work the holidays and you don't want to work the holidays. Or maybe there's been some family uh, trauma, drama that's happening that's still causing a lot of stress in your life. So what I generally recommend that you do, and we're going to again talk really, really extensively about the WHOOP theory. We're going to identify, which is W-O-O-P. Um, we'll talk more about this, but what do you wish for with your health? What do you want it to look like? What's your objective? Like, why would you want to lose fat? Why would you want to have better sleep? So let's say your objective is better sleep. Well, why would you want to have better sleep? What's the objective? And then what's the obstacle stopping it? Maybe you work a nighttime shift. Maybe you have a new baby or a new puppy, or maybe your spouse works a nighttime shift, or maybe you have a lot of stress. Maybe you have a lot of pain. A lot of things can cause sleep disruption. And then what is your plan to get there? So we're going to talk a lot about that and go a little bit slower. I know I am... I have been coached to talk slower and coached to talk and slow down a little bit as I help teach certain things. So I'm definitely going to be very mindful of that. But I want to reach out about this because cortisol is a big hot topic when we talk about immune system, excess fat, blood pressure, sex hormones. How many people out there have hormone disruption or have... Uh, PCOS or have low testosterone or high testosterone if you're a female or having PMS symptoms too early or teenage girls having PMS symptoms way too early. We're going to also deep dive into that because I get a lot of questions about hormones. But today is about reducing stress and looking forward. Actually take a little look back what happened over 2018. Maybe your house burnt down. Maybe you had to relocate and change jobs. Maybe someone was sick in your family. What were those big stressors that could have caused your hormones to get out of balance and specifically cortisol and know that that could actually be disrupting what your goals are. So simply think of this. Have you gone on vacation and you weren't very mindful? You just said, you know what? I'm going on vacation. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I want to enjoy my family, enjoy this. And then you found yourself losing weight. If that is true for you, that would be a cortisol issue. Um, and again, we're going to talk a lot more about that. Or actually, I'm going to talk about it now because someone's texting me. Tell me how to measure cortisol. So how you could me measure cortisol is actually you can do it with saliva testing. And you actually test it four times throughout the day because the cortisol changes throughout the day. It's highest in the morning. I'll put a graph down below below here this afternoon. And then it actually starts to go down about three to four o'clock. So oftentimes you hear me say that one to that one to four, two to four o'clock is that adrenal time is when your body really wants energy. You crave something sugary. You know, you crave something like I want to drive through and get a soda or a coffee, or we tell it's the best time to have some higher fat, to have some ketones, you know, and try to fast through that time. Make sure maybe a little bit extra sea salt can help with that. But so adrenal starts to cortisol starts to go down about four o'clock. And then really by nine or 10, it should be pretty low. So when you're checking your saliva cortisol testing with your physician, you'll have four different sample tubes that you'll check your saliva. And then you can also do a 24-hour urinalysis where you can actually collect all of your urine over the 24 hours and see what your total output of 
cortisol is, and then you can also check it via blood. So there's several different ways you can check it. And I like to have as much data as possible because oftentimes, think about this with uh, maybe breast cancer, oftentimes a sonogram won't pick it up, but maybe a mammogram will or vice versa. The same thing is true for cortisol. What may be found in your saliva can be a little bit different than what your body's outputting in your urine. So you could have a high level in your blood or high level in your saliva, but your body's not releasing it. So then you'd have a lower volume in your urine or vice versa. So that's really important when you're getting that tested. And work with someone who knows what it is, but I didn't want to deep dive into that. I just want to talk about that because after church, my mom was asking, well, who, who gained weight over the holidays, eight days, seven days in Mexico, all inclusive, two days travel. And uh, one of my sons gained weight, but rightfully so. He definitely um, overindulged, but being 20, you can definitely get that off. So just wanted to give you a shout out about that, that stress is really, really important, even with the perfect diet and the perfect workout, that if we don't find a way to actually lower our stress level, then we can cause a whole, a whole court cascade of hormone disruption that can really inhibit you from getting the results that you want. So this is Dr. Heather Carden. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I look forward to hearing your questions. Know this is meant to be shared. I love hearing where you're coming from. Holly's saying when she was in Colorado, she lost weight, even went for that. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about, Holly. If you go on vacation and you lose weight and you sleep better, then normally you probably have a disruption in your cortisol level. So thank you for sharing that. Be brave enough to share it out there with us. So we'd love to hear from you. We really want to have an amazing lineup in 2019, what we can help educate you on and keep it very simple so you can have small strategies to help win every day. So we talk about being the best version of yourself every day. That's not about perfect. It's about good, better, best. It's about shifting things two to 3% a little bit the next day, even if it's just drinking more water, even if it's getting to bed 15 minutes earlier, that small shift, two to three degrees can add up amazing after a day, after a week, after a year. So a lot of things, amazing things can happen. So we're really excited to be here with you on this journey as we close out 2018 and really start really excelling into 2019 with your health. Sorry about the light there. Um, and then let us know what you want to talk about. I am going to go into a deeper, deeper dive about cortisol and hormones because I'm getting a lot of questions about that, especially because of all the stress from the holidays, no matter what holiday you're, you're celebrating this or as we come to the end of the year where there can be financial stress or relationship stress, all those type of things. I'm not going to be a therapist here, but just going to help you identify how you can work with a practitioner or how you can do simple things at home to really just eliminate that stress and start being your own detective, realizing that when Kali went to Colorado, she even went to the breweries and she lost weight, probably indicates she's got a little bit of a stress uh, somewhere in her life throughout her day-to-day -day job or day-to-day -day sleep or things that she may do. And that may be true for many of you watching. Again, talk about cortisol is very high in relationship to increased insulin level, which can cause yo-yoing and blood sugar, which can cause a whole cascade of disruption. So thanks again for joining me here today, guys. I will be back with you later. We're going to talk more about our 10 day and our 60 day and our 20 day programs and more about our monthly reboot so we can help reset your cortisol level. You guys have an amazing day. Thanks for joining me.